Hello, welcome. A couple of people still coming in, but uh, we'll get started with introductions. Uh, so welcome to the maintainer track intro talk about CNI. Um, my name is Brian Borum. I uh, work for a company called Weaveworks. We were one of the very early people putting out a, a CNI plugin, a, a little thing called WeaveNet that, that I have uh, worked on for five years now. Um, Dan, I'm Dan Williams, and I work for a company called Red Hat. And we also uh, are pretty involved in upstream Kubernetes and CNI and a bunch of other container-related projects. Yeah. Uh, now, nowadays, WeaveWorks is probably better known for GitOps, uh, <laughs> if you like that. But um, anyway, uh, let's, let's start with a, a, uh, if I can get this thing to do something. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah. OK. OK, show of hands. Um, uh, who has used CNI? Get everyone a bit of exercise after, the, after lunch. There you go. Every, every, pretty much everyone here has used CNI. Um, uh, who, um, who's written a plugin? Oh, a couple of people. OK. So we do have a deep dive session, which is meant to be um, uh, you know, more deeper into the, the technical details. We're going we're gonna to do a, an intro uh, in this session. Um, that deep dive is tomorrow at exactly this time, I okay. believe. Well, I don't remember. recall what room, but. Um, yeah, and who, who, who has no idea about CNI came to find out what the heck it is? Uh, about the quarter of the room. OK, so welcome. We, Hopefully uh, we do our job. Yeah. And when you leave, you do know. We have slides for that. And, and there should be quite a, plenty of time at the end for questions. Um, OK, so yeah, that's kind of our outline. But let's, um, let me see if this thing's working now. Yes, OK, let me get into it. Let it so this is a, a kind of overview picture of where, where CNI fits into the, uh, the cloud native world. Um, so top left, uh, we have a, a container, which is what we, we attach networks to. Um, in the Kubernetes world, that's going to be a pod, a group of containers. But uh, one thing we'll probably repeat a few times is CNI uh, is not tied to Kubernetes. CNI was created as a, uh, a common interface that could be used by any container runtime and any network. Um, so, so we'll probably refer to Kubernetes a lot, but, but there's, no, uh, there's no strong tie between the two. So, uh, CNI is, is agnostic. Um, so the runtime over on the left is something like Kubernetes. CNI is also used with Mesos, Cloud Foundry. Podman, Cryo. Yeah, bunch of, um, a bunch of different container runtimes use CNI. Um, and the, the basic mode of operation is you start with a container that has no network interface. Uh, the runtime makes a call to CNI. Uh, there's a very small set of verbs, add and del are two of them. Uh, so add will add a network interface to the container. Um, and the details of what you would like done are, are, are placed in a, a, a JSON uh, text, uh, which is given to the CNI plugin. So the, the plugin comes from whoever, whoever's implemented a plugin for your network. You know, that could be a, a network vendor, it could be a third party vendor, or some of the plugins are owned by the CNI project, and we'll, we'll talk about those later. So that's at a very high level, uh, where does CNI fit in? Uh, kind of in between the runtime and the container, just a little bit of glue to uh, operate the network plugin and get it connected onto your network. OK, hand over to Dan. Yeah, so uh, the CNI project at its core is two distinct things. The first one is a specification that documents what the configuration format is uh, for how you give the details for what that CNI plugin should do, which CNI plugin you actually want to run. Um, and also the uh, result that that CNI plugin returns to the runtime, whether that's Kubernetes, Mesos, or anything else. 
Um, and then the second thing is a set of reference plugins. And these are intended to be like the best example of what the CNI project uh, thinks an implementation of a CNI plugin could be. They are fairly simple um, because they have to work with all the different CNI uh, or all the different runtimes that uh, work with CNI. And so that means that they're not tied to any particular um, uh, cloud system like Kubernetes or Mesos or anything. They can literally be run from a command line using the CNI tool, which is also a binary that is produced by the CNI project. Um, and we have a, a pretty extensive set of reference plugins. You can basically build um, you know, uh, most of a cluster of uh, most of a cluster from the plugins, um, and those plugins are also used by um, a number of other projects. Um, but again, they're only a set of reference plugins. They have a fairly limited set of capabilities. They're supposed to be um, fairly simple, and uh, you know we know that a lot of other um, uh, there are a lot of other use cases that these plugins don't meet, and we're fine with that because you know, networking's complicated and everybody has their own needs from it. Uh, so we provide these, but then we also uh, try to make sure that CNI as a project and the specification part of CNI works for uh, many, many different CNI plugins that adhere to the standard. Um, and we also link a lot of those plugins from the uh, CNI project website. So if you were developing a CNI plugin, um, and it's something that you think other people could also use, and you think it's a good example of a CNI plugin, then you know, we'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to uh, potentially put a link to it on the CNI project website. So jumping a little bit more into the specification, it is a vendor neutral specification. Like I said, it doesn't cater to any particular uh, project. Um, it tries to implement uh, what is common between um, all of the different runtimes. Um, and uh, you know, as we said, it's also used by Mesos, Cloud Foundry, Podman, Cryo, uh, Kubernetes, um, ContainerD, uh, and a couple other projects as well. Um, and it just the spec defines uh, both the configuration, the flow um, of execution of plugins. So the verbs that Brian mentioned earlier. Um, it also defines the expectations between the runtime and the CNI plugin around things like versioning. Um, and uh, what the parameters are that get passed between the two, uh, what the results are that come back, and what version that should be. Um, and uh, it also, we make a big attempt to be backwards compatible, um, or when we are not specifically backwards compatible, um, show exactly what uh, you would need to do to implement the new version. Um, but that said, I think we have four or five versions right now of the specification. Um, and it is possible for plugins to actually implement all of those versions. And the project has uh, some helper code that you can use in your plugin uh, to convert between those versions and correctly implement the specification. So just a quick overview of the uh, configuration format. Uh, like Brian said, it's JSON-based, uh, and it's basically just key values uh, that get passed through. There are a number of well-known uh, key values that the spec itself defines. Uh, and those are things like the name of this configuration, uh, what the plugin is that should be called. Um, but then there are also plugin specific keys as well. Um, and in, at least in this example, um, the uh, is default gateway key, force address, IP mask, hairpin mode, those are keys that are specific to the bridge plugin uh, that is specified here. And so if you, uh, you know, need to customize the behavior of a given CNI plugin, uh, you would also be able to do that through the JSON specification. Um, the other section to note is that there is an IPAM section, and that stands for IP Address Management. Um, CNI has the ability to actually compose multiple plugins uh, into kind of one, um, uh, I guess, network setup. Um, and so you can have, for example, here, the bridge plugin doesn't do anything IP address related, really. It just sets up a bridge and connects a container to the bridge. And then you have another plugin um, for your IP address management. Uh, that could be either static, it could be DHCP, it could be, uh, I think in this case, host local. Um, and all these are different ways to figure out what IP address your container would get uh, as a result of the CNI operation. Um, and that's just because everybody has different needs. Uh, and so, you know, CNI doesn't try to prescribe one specific way that things happen. It's a framework for allowing um, different plugins to do exactly what you need in your situation. Should I do this bit? This one, me? Um, no, you can do it if you want. Yeah, so this is, this is kind of a, a, the text version of the picture earlier. The, um, 
the commands add uh, adds a network interface to a container. And let me say at this point, you can call add as many times as you like. The, uh, the number one most popular CNI question that we get asked is how do I do multi-network? And the answer is just do it. Um, the problem most of you might be wondering about is on the other end of the wire, Kubernetes can only call one CNI plugin. Um, so don't complain to us. We're the maintainers of CNI, which has always been multi-network capable. Uh, complain to the maintainers of the other end of the wire, some of whom may be standing on the stage here. Um, uh, a check is a new um, uh, feature. Um, so we, uh, we realized that uh, things can go wrong after an ad. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes network setup is kind of asynchronous, uh, or sometimes things change underneath the runtime. And, and so the purpose of, of, or the idea of check is that the runtime can call check periodically and, and just receive a response as to whether the network is still set up the way it expects. Um, we, we went through multiple iterations of, of how that works. Uh, I think there's a slide later on specifically about check. And we'll talk in more detail in the deep dive tomorrow about oh, check. Oh, that's, that's way later on. Yeah. Yes. 24 hours. Uh, yeah, so just to say, you know, we, uh, check is, uh, is, is pretty new in the evolution of CNI and um, uh, came after we realized that our, our previous design uh, didn't work, uh, in fact, in practice. Um, and the, the last one is, is just a version call, so you can, you can ask a plugin what version of CNI it, it supports. Um, plugins are executables. Plugins uh, are, are run as programs in the host. Um, this, uh, this was just kind of the simplest thing that, that could possibly work. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit about ideas for how we do that differently in the future. But basically, the runtime in the case of Kubernetes, that's kubelet, uh, actually executes a CNI plugin as a separate program. Feeds it the JSON, which we've looked at. Uh, some container-specific data that it might want. Um, and then it gives it back a response in JSON uh, on standard out, which is then picked up by the, by the runtime by, by kubelet in that specific example. So that's, again, just a run through of, of how does CNI work under the hood. Um, I just realized that I said something slightly wrong. I said kubelet only calls CNI once. In fact, it calls it twice um, currently. Uh, it calls it once to set up the loopback address, 127.0.0.1, uh, and then it calls it again for your kind of regular pod network. Both of those are set up by CNI on behalf of um, kubelet. That's kind of an esoteric detail. So I guess technically Kubernetes does support multi-networking. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you want to take this one? Sure. Um, so the, uh, the reference plugins we have, uh, this is kind of a list of a bunch of them. Um, there's Bridge, which a lot of you may be familiar with, because that's you know, usually the default one that you see in examples out there on the internet. It's just a, a host. A, a, a local bridge on that particular host or that particular node, and then all the containers are connected to it with VETH interfaces. Uh, there's also VLAN, MAC VLAN, IP VLAN, host device, point to point, um, and then over the last, I think, year and a half or two years, we've gotten a, a couple of Windows-related plugins. Um, the Windows bridge one it essentially duplicates the functionality of the Linux bridge plugin. Um, uh, basically the same constructs, but on the Windows side, and then there's a Windows overlay plugin. Uh, which actually, I believe, uses VXLAN between two different Windows nodes um, to provide communication. Yeah. Who, uh, worked on that in the yep. room. So, thank you for that. If you have questions, ask them. <laughs> um, yep. So that's that was great to see. Um, before then, we didn't really have a lot of uh, cross-platform uh, capability for CNI, uh, or at least uh, people who had written those had not contributed those back. So, thanks to Microsoft for sending those in. Um, on the IPAM side, we have host local, which uh, takes a subnet that's assigned to the node and uh, just distributes IP addresses from that subnet to containers, um, but only on that node. Uh, and then there's a DHCP plugin, so if you really want to use DHCP with your containers, you can do that. 
and then a static plugin for static IP addresses. Um, and there's also a number of what we call meta plugins. And those are plugins that don't set up any particular layer two connectivity. Uh, they don't set up any uh, IP address connectivity either, but they provide additional features on top of the other plugins. Um, and uh, they're typically used as chained plugins, uh, which is I think a concept we'll get to uh, in a little bit. Um, they're basically plugins that you add on to the end of some, you know, a chain of other plugins. So you'd, for example, have the bridge plugin to set up your uh, actual interfaces, an IPAM plugin to do the IP address management, and then perhaps the bandwidth plugin to set some limits on the bandwidth uh, going either into and or out of the container. Um, and these are all maintained by the CNI project. Uh, and like I said before, we try to keep these plugins uh, the best example of the CNI specification that we can. We always attempt to uh, update these plugins for new specification features before we actually release a specification so that it serves as an example to other plugin developers for how to implement new features of the CNI specification. Uh, yeah, so a shout out to all the maintainers, uh, um, two of whom, uh, myself, Brian, and Dan, are here on the stage. Uh, we have a reasonably heavy representation from Red Hat, um, uh, somewhat from the core OS history and, and, and somewhat from the Red Hat history. Um, but, you know, pretty, uh, pretty broad uh, spectrum of people. Uh, there's no company behind CNI. There's no VC funding. Uh, none of us are going to become a billionaire um, out of uh, container network interface specification. But, um, but we do, it, you know, I think it's a, it's a kind of essential piece of uh, glue technology that uh, everybody in the, in the cloud native world needs to, needs to have there and running effectively. Uh, and also, you know, lots of contributors, lots of people who are not maintainers but send in fixes. Um, thank you to all of them. Uh, what happened recently? Lots of stuff. Yeah. Right? That's what it says. Yeah. Um, we've done a bunch of releases over the last year uh, of libcni. Uh, libcni, I don't think we talked about it that much previously, but uh, it's kind of another component of the CNI project besides the specification and the reference plugins. Libcni is a Go library that is meant to be used by runtimes like Kubernetes Docker Shim um, or Cryo, Podman, um, or any of the other pieces that actually use CNI as the glue layer. It implements a lot of convenience functions for the runtime, so they don't have to implement that themselves. Um, and it does a lot of the work around like, you know, making sure that the version of the plugin that you're calling is compatible with the version of the configuration that you're actually trying to pass to the plugin, uh, parsing some of the results, uh, and also doing some caching of the configuration and the returned result. Uh, to make sure that that can be used for further operations later on. So it's really just a convenience library to make life easier for the people who are trying to integrate with CNI. Um, and we've done a bunch of plugin releases uh, and a uh, whole bunch of commits in the last year, as well as a, a good number of contributors from outside of the core maintainer team. Uh, and the check function is new, um, and Brian talked quite a bit about that. Config and result caching I just mentioned, uh, and those are, again, convenience functions for the runtimes. Um, they, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that as well in the deep dive tomorrow if you're interested, and if you're a runtime author or even a plugin author, um, because some of the new features in the CNI specification 04 and later do make use of the config caching and provide plugins with some uh, often requested features. So check back tomorrow for uh, a deep, dive on that. Uh, and then new plugins, uh, bandwidth, there's also a firewall plugin, uh, and the firewall plugin allows you to poke holes through the host node's firewall to do things like allow containers to reach specific uh, resources, DNS, DHCP. Um, you can also do more fine-grained rules with that if you really want to do that kind of access control on containers through CNI. Um, and uh, the SBR plugin is let's, uh, uh, something big. Routing. Routing, yes. Or, yeah, yep. routing if you're this side. Routing if you're, uh, if you're in the UK. Yep. Uh, and that was a, a recent contribution this yeah. last year? Uh, yeah. So, so sending things out different interfaces depending on uh, the source IP. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and then also a static, ad, uh, static plugin. We had a lot of requests in the past for being able to do something like that or at least modify uh, the IP addresses of the plugin uh, with more precision uh, than just using some of the IPAM plugins. Uh, and so that was a contribution as well from outside of the core maintainer team. The Windows support. Uh, and then also a couple of tuning plugins to adjust things. Um, so if, for example, you want to lock a specific MAC address, uh, not all the plugins allow you to be able to do that. And so you can chain another plugin on later, the tuning plugin that allows you to set the MAC address of the containers interface. Okay. Um, yeah, a little bit about how the project works. Uh, you know, I put up I put up the list of of maintainers, and we. Um, uh, we, we have a weekly meeting, uh, video call, where probably, probably more than half the maintainers show up uh, every week, and we, um, we go through recent issues, recent PRs, and so on, um, just make sure everything's up to date, discuss, discuss the future, maybe. We, um, so it might be important to point out there that if you do uh, file a PR on CNI, or if you do file an issue on CNI, it actually does get looked at every single week. Whether or not it gets a reply, we are immediately we are aware of it, and we do look at those issues yeah. very frequently. Yeah, you don't need to at mention me. Um, so, yeah, you know the spec is is intentionally slow. Um, we don't want to just go breaking things all the time. Uh, it is uh, currently at what is it? 0.7. Um, anyway, whatever, it's zero point something and, and we really want to label it 1.0 because that's going to relax certain people who, who don't, like the, don't like the idea of an O point something. Um, actually, I think I have a sl whole slide about what's, what is 1.0. Um, plugins, yeah, we, we, you know, we shove our plugin releases uh, quite often, usually, usually to um, you know, fix little things that have come up. And, and we do get a lot of, a lot of uh, third party fixes um, to the plugins. Um, kind of further, further to what Dan said, uh, you know, you, you, one thing that probably won't work is to show up and demand that we do some work. Uh, you know, even if it's really important to you, uh, we're all kind of volunteers. So, um, so what works better is to show up with a fix. You know, we, 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 we need to hear about the issues, and uh, uh, obviously we, we fix a bunch of things, but, um, but there's, no, uh, you know, there's no support contract, so. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so, so once again, the things like Cube Proxy and so on are not part of the CNI project. Um, so, you know, speak to them if you, uh, if you have something to say about them. So what's next? Like Brian mentioned, uh, we'd like to get the spec to 1.0. Um, there are, uh, we consider the spec basically 1.0 at this point, but there are a couple, excuse me, leftover things that we want to do. Um, we need much better test coverage on some of the reference library, the, uh, the libcni reference library as well as the plugins. Uh, we also want to review the spec, um, you know, kind of go through it one more time for clarity because something that has come up every now and again is uh, people will file issues or we'll find bugs ourselves in the various things that use CNI, and that's often caused by an ambiguity in the specification. Um, I recently sent in a fix for a third-party plugin that uh, did not return the result to the runtime in the same version that the configuration was sent, and that was clarified in the v4 specification, which the plugin claimed to support, um, but that was not actually clear in the v3 specification from I think about a year ago, which is probably when that plugin was last updated uh, for CNI specifications. So we do you know, find things in the field and then try to update the specification to make sure that it's clear what the contract is between plugins and runtimes so to make it easier to follow the CNI specification. Um, and then uh, last, uh, signed release binaries. That's something that uh, a lot of projects have requested. It's something that we know we need to do, um, and we are working on that but it has not happened yet. Uh, and finally, pretty much, um, yeah, if you want to get involved, I mean, if you just want to chat to us, the, the Slack, we're now using the CNCF Slack for reasons. Uh, but yeah, they, they, they uh, maintain it and moderate it, uh, so that's great. Topic uh, CNI, uh, 
Um, all the cost software is on GitHub. You can open an issue. You can open a PR. Um, if you uh, make your own plugin, that's great as well. We, we love to host a link to it. We probably will not uh, just accept your plugin and start maintaining it. Um, you know, mo most like me, never say never, but uh, uh, most likely we, um, we would like you to host your plugin um, and we'll have a link to it. So yeah, I think that's, that's the material we came prepared with. Um, uh, both our companies have booths that you might manage to catch us on, but if you have questions in the room, um, let's go. We have yep. a, a if you microphone. Raise your hand and I'll run the mic around and you can ask your question. We have one over here on the left. Different left. Hey, thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, I was wondering, I use OpenShift um, in production at my current job, um, and I'm on, currently on 3.11 and I'm moving over to 4X. Um, what are the SNI choices that, that Red, uh, Red Hat has made in 4X, and you know, what are the reasons why, um, and how does that kind of support you know, possibly chaining together multiple, um, um, multiple CNIs? What's that? Good question. Um, uh, OpenShift supports chaining together any, basically, uh, OpenShift ships with a default network plugin, but you can change that network plugin at install time in v4, um, and that's through the network operator. So you can pick whichever CNI plugin you want. You could pick the OpenShift default ones. You could pick Weave, for example. Um, and uh, you can chain, um, if you pick a different CNI plugin, it's, uh, that CNI plugin ends up writing out its config file, and you can chain different plugins through that. Um, so it is really all driven through the CNI config files. Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah, we had a we had a question over here. Hi. Uh, my question is: You mentioned uh, you can combine multiple. Uh, uh, CNIs together. Uh, can you explain that piece a little bit more? Like, what does actually that means, and the check function that you talked about? Okay. Well, let's let's take those one at a time. Uh, combining multiple plugins. Um, uh, so conceptually, it's it's a chain. Uh, uh, so uh, and I think Dan. Whoa! Don't do that. I think Dan gave this example that, that you might set up a, a bridge uh, and then allocate an IP address um, and then maybe uh, set up a firewall rule and then uh, you could, uh, what else could you do? Set the MAC address. Uh, there's another option on the tuning plugin which is to set the MTU. Uh, so those, those could all actually be separate. Uh, well, there's at least three separate CNI plugins that I just mentioned. And they, they basically just run one after another, and each one modifies the network setup of what, whatever the one before did. Um, so that's a chain for, for one network interface for one container um, going through multiple plugins. Now, you know, it doesn't make sense to, to do like WeaveNet followed by OpenShift or something like that. They'll, they'll, they'll just fight. You know, they, they, you can't mix. It's not like making. Well, actually, it is like making a cake, right? You know, you can't, <laughs> you can't just put everything in the cake. Um, but uh, don't, don't make up metaphors on the fly, Brian. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so, so uh, it, it, as long as the uh, chain of things makes, makes some kind of sense, you can chain together anyone's, anyone's plugins. Uh, and all of that is, is in the JSON file that is, is conceptually defined by the, by the cluster admin. I say conceptually because you know, different implementations will, will do that different ways and, and um, uh, most people are just not interested that you just take the default. But, but that, that JSON file lists out the, all the different plugins that are gonna get called and any of the specific parameters that they need. Uh, so that's, does that help on that piece on the multiple plugins? 
And then your other question was check. Do you want to take that? Sure. Um, you know, like Brian said, check is for making sure that the container's networking is healthy um, after it has been set up. Um, and that is another CNI verb. It's kind of like a top level verb along at, with add, del, and version. Um, and what happens is the runtime will call check, and the libcni component that the runtime usually depends on uh, will pull the result from the add operation out of a cache and pass that to the plugins as part of the check call so that they actually know what they had set up the last time if they didn't cache that themselves. So then what the plugin is supposed to do with the check verb is say, does the state of the container match what was in the result that I sent back to the runtime? Um, or it can do other things like you know, try to figure out if it's a complicated plugin, maybe its control plane is unhealthy because it can't talk to its you know, master service somewhere. Um, and if any of these things are not as the plugin expects, um, then it should return an error back to the runtime and then the runtime is supposed to do something intelligent with that error, like kill the container so that it can be restarted and become healthy. So the runtime's responsibility is to periodically call check on some you know, defined interval uh, just to kind of health check the container's networking setup. And this is in addition to whatever the runtime might do for um, you know, higher level health checks, like making sure that the uh, HTTP service that the container provides uh, is still doing what it expects. Uh, the check is really kind of more at like the IP and lower level. Does that explain it a little bit better? You, you shout out and I'll repeat it. Yeah. So the question is, does the chain have to follow a hierarchy? Uh, and so it's, it's linear, um, but it, it has to make some sense in that uh, you know, for instance, if you're going to set the MAC address up, then, then first you set the interface up, then you set the MAC address. So it's, it's, it's purely linear, um, but the, there has to make some sense in, in the sort of logic of, of what you're actually doing. Uh, yeah, so if you uh, created an interface, uh, set the IP address, set the MAC address, and set the firewall rule, then basically the last three of those could come in any order. Well, actually, yeah, probably the firewall rule will come after the IP address. That, that's, an, that's a very good example of you know, what makes sense. The, the firewall rule is probably going to need the IP address. Uh, well, it depends how you do it, but uh, that's a good example. Some combinations don't make sense. We'll, we'll do the mic, yeah. It's on. Yeah. Since you're executing multiple plugins, is there a desired state validation at the end of uh, executing all the plugins? Uh, so are you saying is there validation? Yeah, desired state um, that you want your network interface to be because you're executing so many plugins. Inside. Well, uh, I mean, uh, that's what the, the check function will also call all the same plugins. Um, so yeah, we, we, we expect all of them to, to validate as best they can. Um, is, is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, so the, the add function will go through every plugin in turn. Uh, the check function will go through every plugin in turn. And the, the del function, which takes an interface away, calls them in the reverse order, which is the smartest thing we could think of doing. Yep. And version will also call them all in the order and then make sure that the intersection of all of the reported versions of all of the plugins in the chain uh, you know, is something other than an empty set, and then at that point it's a valid configuration. Because each plugin in the chain has to support at least, you know, a, a version, so that they can all make sure that they're agreeing on what they, the input that they get. Uh, thanks. Uh, what's the recommend, recommended way of handling transient, transient errors uh, in a command add implementation in a container plugin? Uh, should I just try to handle them myself, or should I just return an error and like the container right, the runtime is going to reissue the call uh, later? Um, I mean, I, I think the answer there is kind of a mix. Um, you know, for things that you think that your plugin can handle fairly quickly, I mean, you don't necessarily want to block, you know, for like two minutes or something in plugin setup. Um, but you know, if it's you know something that you think you can recover from fairly quickly, or you think there's a possibility of recovering from, uh, it's probably safe to do that in the plugin. 
Um, but you know, if it's something like um, your control plane is not ready yet, you know, then you should probably just return an error to the runtime and let the runtime decide when to restart, you know, when to do like a back off or something like that for restarting. So I mean, I think it's, it's really a mix of both. Anything else to add, Brian? No, I think I'd agree with that. And, and, and unfortunately, I think we're pretty much at time. Um, we could- Do we have time uh, for one more? Sure, one, one yeah. last question. Who's? Well, we can take more questions in, uh, you know, down the front or in the hall afterwards. Uh, hey, Brian, this is related to Weave, not exactly CNI. So we do use Weave in our Kubernetes clusters, and we generate the config file using WeaveWorks, like cloud.weaveworks. So my question is, like, it's well documented that we won't work with Kubernetes 1.4 or below, but is there any way, like, going forward that we will stop working with prior versions of Kubernetes, or what really defines that matrix? Uh, well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess the sort of standard is to support the current version and two older versions, but we know that, we know that people uh, go back into the deep history. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if you have very specific requirements, come, come by the booth and we can, we can try and help you out. But um, uh, yeah, generally things stop working because of new features and, and they're just not compatible with, with old stuff. But we, we certainly, certainly would aim to do two versions back and usually much more. Anyway, thank you. We're at time. Thank you. Um,